name is JL. I'm the pretrial justice organizer for Decarcerate Sacramento. And I am here today to oppose the new jail annex again. This is the fourth time that we are here for this thing where we have yet to hear substantial enough evidence or information to make this dark tower seem remotely appealing for the people inside or for the community. So I hope the fourth time is the charm and we will not have to relive this nightmare next year. Sacramento County was sued by three law firms on behalf of everyone incarcerated in Sacramento or Sac County jails. This class action lawsuit is called Mays versus Sacramento. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it and actually shouldn't be surprised. I have spoken to so many folks on the inside who were literally in life or death situations but couldn't get the care that they deserve in the jail until these law firms got involved. That same situation is happening far too often, in fact. I have a loved one that had been in the Sac County Jail from May 2019 to just recently, pre-trial, until he was just moved to a different county facility. He contracted COVID twice, was attacked by someone who suffered from a mental health illness, and let's not even talk about the mental health illness he suffers from himself, like extreme anxiety, PTSD, bi bipolar disorder, in which he received no real treatment for aside from the mountains of prescription drugs being poured down the folks on the inside's throats. I ask you all today, if in the current jail there is not enough staff to medically help people, not enough staff to let these folks out their cells long enough to shower, eat, and call a loved one in one sitting, and not enough staff for folks to program, what makes you think a bigger dark tower with not enough staff is the solution? The community leaders here today and listening in have not only raised the problem, but have also given alternatives to help correct this problem. And it will cost you far less to invest in the community than it would to build this annex that will only suck money out of us and make our people worse. Before my loved one left this place, his children would ask if I thought he would actually die in there. And the worst part is I couldn't answer because I didn't know. Mm. There are so many other families who have a loved one pre-trial, just like me, who also can't sleep at night because they are worried that person won't make it out. My one ask today, BOS, is think, who is this annex actually benefiting? And then put yourself in the shoes of many families and the folks on the inside and vote Hell no to this annex. And in spirit of all the quotes we have been hearing today, I will leave you all with two quotes. Do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. My mm. Angelou. Mm. There comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor popular. But he must take it because conscience tells him it is right. Martin Luther King. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Hi, My name is Marshall Arnwine. I work for the American Civil Liberties Union, also known as ACLU. Uh, we are a legal civil rights organization that seeks to reduce incarceration through unjust policies and frameworks like one that's presented to you today. We urge this, vote, this board to vote no against any construction of any jail facility. We analyzed the 62-page remedial plan, and we found that the majority of what's happening in that plan has more to do with the management, the failures of it, the people in there, and the policies, and not the physical jail facility. I emailed this board a letter addressing that on November 23rd and December 7th. Please read it if you haven't. In that letter, it talks about the six categories that's in the remedial plan, and it also gives recommendations on how to implement a process of complying with the Mace Consent Decree without building a new jail facility. Specifically within the category of ADA compliance, it is important to remember that there are 17 sub areas in that section. Of the 17, there's only two that objectively call for a physical modification. In fact, complying with the ADA, it's important to remember the U.S. Supreme Court Olmstead. The whole point of that case, it affirmed that the ADA prohibits the needless institutionalization of people with mental disabilities as they are better served in community settings. The county's priorities are out of order, but why is that? Why is it that the county has not directed a cost-benefit analysis comparing the justification for a new facility 
versus alternatives to incarceration that can comply with the May's consent decree? Why are the county diversion programs, pilot programs, and not fully funded? Why is there so much fear being put into trying to treat people? In fact, the ACLU did a report to learn how are people actually being charged. So from 2017 to 2018, over 97,000 people have been charged, and we got this information from a California public records request. And we found that among both felonies and misdemeanors, DUIs, meth possession, driving a stolen vehicle, and petty theft are the most common charges leading to conviction, making up more than a third of sustained charges. Between 2017 and 2018, 912 individuals were convicted of DUIs, 925 people convicted of meth possession, 815 people of petty theft, and 905 for driving a stolen vehicle. These cases present opportunities for diversion and restorative justice as they stem from needs that will be better met by addiction counseling and recovery programs and social services. So we recommend using the funding proposal for jails for services to prevent things like that in the first place. And we recommend that this board PRA, the DA's office, to learn what they're currently charging right now. And you will see it's not just people committing murder. It's unfortunate that there's been so much fear that it's going to be a thousand people walking out the front door into communities. That has been intellectually dishonest, has been frustrating, and has not been transparent. Please direct the staff to be more transparent, more honest, and please make an informed decision. And lastly, as I conclude, remember that jails the momentum of the institution has always been about control and punishment, and it moves in the opposite direction of treatment. If you really want to treat people, creating a jail facility is not the way. So please vote no in jail facility. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Marshall. Yeah, I first want to start off by thanking our new DA and sheriff for showing themselves for the filthy, corrupt liars that they actually are. I'd say they dis like, they're dishonoring their office, uh, but their predecessors really just dragged that through the mud, so it's really not doing anything better. I mean, we had T and Ho up here who literally fabricated a completely new felony classification system just to try and portray the 83% of our jail population that's just waiting to see a court, uh, a court trial as dangerous felons uh, who are unworthy or irredeemable. So not only is that completely disrespectful and false, but it also is anti-black, it's racist, uh, because uh, we, as was pointed out by county staff, 40 almost 40%, 39% exact to be exact, of the jail population are black people. Right? So what are we actually saying about those people? Is do we not consider them to be innocent until proven guilty? Or are they guilty until proven innocent? According to T.N. Ho, that seems to be the case. Same thing, too, with uh, uh, the new Sheriff Cooper, who so savagely waltzed out here and paraded a bunch of like of images of murdered loved ones as political props just to try and make an argument as if uh, for having an ex a new jail facility, as if after countless reports that have been put out to you all that you have been see seeing and hearing all day long are going to somehow justify the need for that. It's frankly absurd. We have $450 million on the table right now that could actually be used for genuine community-based health care services and prevention services to keep people out of the jail system in the first place. In fact, you have a you have a shortage of health care workers, of behavioral health workers uh, in the county that you could be putting this money towards. In fact, if you're looking at the, like, the, the price that you're offering for people to, uh, to come hire on to the county for behavioral health specialists, they're making between 41000 and 50000 That's their like That's their starting salary. Compared with deputy sheriffs who are being offered $83,000 to $112,000 annually. And that's a permanent open, like that's a continuously open hiring position. Do you know how many people you could pay for just 13 million or, or like a little over 10% or so of uh, 450 million? I'm not sure about the exact percentage, but for $13 million, you could actually afford 33 behavioral health peer specialists, or 330, I'm sorry, 330 behavioral health peer specialists just at the low end of the starting salary that you're offering. You could also hire 267 
mental health workers, licensed mental health workers, or unlicensed, 200 social workers, or 200 health educators, or any equivalent combination for just a fraction of the 450 million that you're talking about. And even more so, you could be funding multiple, like you could actually be opening up and expanding mental health treatment uh, centers, like our Sacramento Mental Health Treatment Center, which you could be expanding today with additional beds if you just put money into it because you haven't actually used the money to expand like to expand it since it was cut back after the like the 2008 financial collapse this isn't a lack of resources that we're facing and the like the problems within the jail have nothing to like have little to do with the structural plant deficiencies that's a misnomer like that's not only just a misnomer but it's a lie you already put money down on the table, and I, I will finish okay, up. Okay. Um, you already put money down on the table for reno like for ADA renovations, and you then county staff has been wasting time not actually implementing those. When you, instead talking through, misleading you all and the public into thinking that we need a brand new jail facility or a new intake facility, like that's going to help anything. Okay. Thanks, Kim. Use your imaginations, please. Thank you, Kim.